and I'm going to record this as well. Cool. Hey, everybody on social media, Facebook. We're about to get live in just a little bit. Please stay locked, stay loaded. And welcome to the Impact Radio Show presented by the Florida Star Newspaper. This is your host, Nashawn Nix. Uh, I want to encourage all of our viewing and listening audience to do business with one of the oldest Black-owned newspapers in the South, the Georgia Star and Florida Star Newspaper. Yes, Miss Vanessa, beach and bougie. Uh, she's actually um, out on tonight. Uh, hopefully she'll chime in a little later to let us know if we have any local news that everybody needs to be aware of. Uh, but um, but 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 once again, we're so excited because we're doing so great uh, in South Georgia and North Florida. So once again, if you want to promote your product, your business, your service, your event, do business with one of the oldest Black-owned newspapers in the South, uh, floridastar.com floridastar.com. Uh, once again, we got digital, we got print, uh, we have subscriptions, over 30,000 subscribers uh, between South Georgia and North Florida. So you want to be able to get your, 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 your uh, business, your product, your service, your events. You want to have those outlets. And this is one of our Black-owned outlets in the South. Uh, once again, this is Nishan Nix. Um, I got a great guest with me on tonight, a brother that I've known for some years, and uh, I'm super proud of what he's doing in our city and for our youth. Uh, uh, brother Kamal, can you introduce yourself to our listening and viewing audience on tonight? Peace. How everybody doing? Um, my name is um, actually uh, Dante Martin, a.k.a. Kamal Shakur. What's your mama um, call you? I'm not saying <laughs> Uh, Dante Martin, uh, aka alias is uh, Kamal Shakur. I'm happy to be here. Yes, uh, I, I'll be wanting to say Kamal, how you like me now, but I'm gonna leave that alone. Leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but brother Kamal, we got some great stuff going on in the city, and uh, sure. and, and and um, and and what I know about you, you're always about virtues and uh, deep intellect and 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 cultivating the culture. Uh, yeah. And uh, so uh, kind of tell our listener and viewer audience uh, what's going on in this city that they need to be aware of pertaining to Afrocentric education. Well, this Saturday, um, me and his sister, uh, Timalati, who actually started, um, as I know it, the, uh, I guess I don't want to say first African-American school here in Jacksonville, but right now the only African-American school here in Jacksonville um, so on Saturday, we're doing a, a lecture to basically inform people on what African-centered education is. That'll be this Saturday um, at four o'clock at uh, Brother B-Sign location, 2422 North uh, Murder Avenue. So we're going to inform the public and everybody on what it is when we speak about African-centered education and the difference between <clears throat> this particular education and public school system. Yes. And... Uh... So will we say the opposite of an Afrocentric education is a Eurocentric education or, or am I stressing too far? Yeah, you could say Eurocentric. You could say public school system. Um, it all operates under that same type of um, creed, just different names that um, people choose to call it based on how they want to convey that particular message. So what makes uh, an Afrocentric education unique or like what's the customization in, in that type? What can someone expect or their child can expect from, uh, and what's the name of the school, by the way? Um, Dr. Kobe Kinbone Academy. All right, and what is some, something unique, what, what, what are some of the unique features of an Afrocentric education that someone may not be exposed to in a public or Eurocentric thought process? Well, the first thing that, that makes it unique is all the teachers look like us, right? Okay. Um, Okay. When, you, when you look at the uh, statistics of actual uh, black teachers in the school system, this is in America, it's uh, 9%. And even when you look into the statistics for um, the ratio between black and white students in the all, well, black and white teachers in the all black school, over 50% are white. So the, the main difference is, is 100% of 
um, black teachers and we teach from a cultural lens. Uh, we have to realize that African kids learn different than European kids, just as much as Mexican kids learn different than Asians. I mean, you can't expect to go to an all Asian school and not speak Mandarin or something of that nature, you know, so basically. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> and, and, and that's all we and that's all we'll be able to say <laughs> but um that, that's what makes it unique is is us teaching us and because we understand how we relate as african people we understand how to relate to the uh young black kid or the young black girl because we might have some at our home you see what i'm saying so that alone will actually build um um self-esteem and self-worth in a little African or black child. And and uh and I, I like how you put self-worth and uh, self-esteem because really that's kind of like the launch pad for learning. And uh uh, uh and when you say learn different and uh different modalities, uh it's kind of uh a unique and uh uh, uh, uh salute uh to the general Dr. Renoko Rashidi. Uh, yeah. because uh, yeah. he, sh he really demonstrated uh, African slash black intellect on a, on a anthro uh, polish, anthro, well, how do you say that word? Not anthro anthropologist, but, uh, but, but the jicko portion of the anthropologist, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, like he was able to intelligently talk about the African experience not just within Africa or the Comedic Empire, but uh, uh, throughout the globe. I mean, yeah. uh, like granted, you got the, the Dr. Ivan Ben uh, uh, Terma. Ben Sertima. Sertima, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, they came before Columbus. And it's mm -hmm. like uh, Dr. Renoko Rashidi encompassed or engulfed all of, they came before Columbus and then showed you the African presence in the Philippines in Asia, South America, North America, et cetera. Like he really took a deep dive. And yeah. now uh, when we look at this uh, pertaining to an Afrocentric education, what about applicability, uh, uh, Kamal? How do we look at applicability? You did talk about self-esteem earlier, but how do we apply some of these hidden gems in, in, in today's time? Like what, what do we look at pertaining to like relevance? I wanna make sure that, that we're not losing people like, yes, that's great. Black people did great stuff thousands of years ago. Yeah. How does that, how do, how do we make that applicable? Well, we can make that applicable because number one, we as African people have been creators and will forever create. Now, because we in a situation we're in where we haven't really created anything collectively other than since probably since like rap music or hip hop, so when you get that African say that one more time. Education. Say that one more time. Say that. Say we, that one more time. I say we, we haven't have really, created. we haven't really created something collectively for the world, so to speak. Since really hip hop, you see what I'm saying. So when 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 our kids learn culturally, they able to create and then expand on our culture. You see what I'm saying. So it's almost like a, it's, it's a safe heaven as well. So in order for them to expand and then keep it within the community, keep it within the African centered community, um, they have to have certain cultural upbringings, right? Just as much as if, if when um, the East Indians or whatever come over here, they go through schooling, we're in their respective land, but they come over here to get that post high school education to learn how to operate globally. And then they take everything they learn back to their, to their land, but they have that upbringing that they able to see it from a cultural lens. So for us, that's the goal. All right. Now uh, we are uh, fundraising, and this is this event on Saturday is a fundraiser and like yeah. a, a, a info session. So if you're listening, uh, I want you to uh, call out the address. But if people can't make it because uh, with this particular broadcast, we don't know whose ears or whose pockets it may reach. And this yeah. is a, a fundraiser to help scholarship uh, Black youth uh, into uh, an Afrocentric education. So I want you to call out the address for this event this Saturday, the time and location, and then call out how people can give or donate. 
And then we okay, got to take so, a break um, after that. This Saturday, um, the, the uh, fundraiser lecture will be at 2422 uh, North Murder Avenue, um, Jacksonville, Florida. The cash app, if you're not able to make it, is um, dollar sign F-U-N-D-K-K-A. And you can also visit the website, uh, www.kamboon, that's K-A-M-B-O-N, Academy, A-C-A-D, emy.com so um you know please reach out we need those scholarship funds to be able to uh keep everything rolling if you can't make it out this saturday then uh, you can definitely donate we definitely appreciate it listen everybody we're coming back with brother kamal uh after these messages you listen to the impact radio show presented by the florida star newspaper this is your host michelle nix we'll be right back after these messages all right now even though we're taking a break from the radio we're still live so on social media Call okay. out that cash app right now. Cash app is um, dollar sign F-U-N-D-K-K-A. All right. And uh, what I want to do is uh, uh, I'm going to do, uh, 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 I'm going to do something tonight. I'm going to do 25 and then I'm going to, my goal is to get to 500. So I'm going to do yeah. 25 uh, tonight. And then y'all might have to put me on a payment plan to get the, 475. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> all right, all right. that's even good. So, that's, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, and, and like I said, um, uh, um, uh, my thing is, is that, uh, uh, you got to give, you got to teach children the way that they learn. Exactly. And, uh, and exactly. if, and if, uh, and if Dr. Kobe Kimbone, did I pronounce it right? That's it. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're back. We're back. Uh, this is the Impact Radio Show presented by the Florida Star Newspaper. This is your host, Nishan Nix. Uh, we got Brother Kamal uh, uh, with us on tonight uh, talking about Afrocentric education. And right before the break, he talked about something very powerful pertaining to cultural values, right? And, uh, and how typically before someone sends their child to America uh, from China or Asia, they're already embedded with certain cultural values. Now, granted, my brother Kamal didn't necessarily say it exactly like that, but that was the gist of what I was able to, to kind of gather. And then after they get their certifications in the medical field or engineering field, they go back home with a global perspective, but they still have their cultural values already locked and loaded. Uh, and similar to uh, 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 something similar to that, and I'm not gonna stay here long, uh, but there was a protest uh, uh, yesterday here in the city pertaining to uh, Confederate statues. Uh, there was a huge uprising after the assassination of George Floyd, and uh, they immediately uh, shifted uh, Confederate Park to, I believe it's James Weldon Johnson Park. And, uh, and uh, basically what they did was they made sure that they got those statues from in front of City Hall. And uh, I believe the Northside Coalition and other strategic partners are calling for other statues to also be removed from out of the city. And people say, well, it's just a name. It's just a name. It's just Nathan B. Forrest. It's just a name. Why do we need to change the name? And they, I don't think that they look at the cultural values that are also embedded in exactly. certain names and certain monuments and certain statues. And, uh, and with those cultural values, it also ties into historical defamation or historical degradation <clears throat> pertaining to uh, the values of the of what Black people have contributed to this city, to this state, to this country, as well as the world as a whole. And, 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 and I don't really think that, that, that sometimes we, we, we look at the sensitivity pertaining to the cultural values and how it also transcends into economic status, living yeah. situations, crime, uh, and education, which is a foundation for all Americans. All Americans should be entitled to a great education. Uh, and with the Afrocentric education, obviously, is one launch pad to help be able to increase and improve that self-esteem, self-value, self-identity, self-worth, to where there, our babies are able to compete on a global level because they have those cultural embeddedness of greatness, of success, of intellect. And when you started talking about hip hop, oh my goodness, I, I really believe that some of the founding fathers and mothers 
and sisters of hip hop would be turning over in the grave right now if they heard some of the music and the lyrics that our babies are rapping about, that our sons and daughters are, are rapping about. Because in the words of Lauren Hill, music is supposed to inspire. Exactly. But how come we ain't getting no higher? And um, and uh, so you kind of kind of judged me a little bit, jug, jugged at me a little bit, uh, uh, Brother Kamal, before we went into the break. So that I'm off my soapbox. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to pass it back to you because um, yeah. uh, are there any other areas that 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 this Afrocentric education could really benefit our youth on today pertaining to relevance? Yes, um, in all areas, in all areas, I think the um, most important area is psychological. Mm. And, psych and, and psycho spiritually, because being able to understand who you are as a person historically and understand what people like you did to uh, make a contribution globally, that can build one's self esteem. Just like you said, with the uh, Confederate statues that you know uh, uh, certain Europeans are holding on tight to, that's for them, that's their culture. So they're going to hold on to that because that's the very thing that keeps their they, they engine steaming. You see, so for us, the psyche is important because that's one of the ways or the main ways they continue to enslave us. You see what I'm saying? So to be able to build that self-esteem and self-worth through the education, it can then get, get expressed in all aspects of life. So no matter if you want to be an engineer, no matter if you want to be a dancer, no matter what you want to do in life, you're going to keep them cultural values with yourself because you understand your self-worth. So that's the that's the purpose of the education, to instill that within the child and everything else is just be an expression of that. And that's what culture really is about. So, you know, like it's more than just the education, it's seeing us, the teachers, the locks, the hair. You see what I'm saying? Seeing how we can be educators and scholars and and and, and scientists and all these great things by just looking just like this child. So, you know, it's, 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 it's very important, very important. I mean, even studies to this day talk about the impact that uh, black teachers have on black kids. You know, statistics have shown that if a black so, so, male is in the classroom, um, so that lowers the dropout rate. Yeah, I, go, want go ahead. Back, I want to pull back just for a second because, um, uh, I don't know who coined this phrase, but people typically don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Where did this passion come from for, for, for you? And me? You like oh, to be man. able to educate Black youth from an Afrocentric perspective, where did that passion, like when did this thing become, like, this fire is lit, it ain't going it, out. It, it, it clicked for me when I started to re-educate myself, but actually when I went home, when I got home from college. I grew up in low-income neighborhoods um, and, you know, 99, 100% Black. So once I- and Where is this again? Uh, Columbia, South Carolina. South Kakalaki, keep going. Yeah. South Kakalaki, West, West Beltline to my brothers that's watching. Um, in Orangeburg, South Carolina too. I went to high school down in Orangeburg. You all know. right, that's enough calling um, out all your cousins and everything. <laughs> now tell us about this fire <laughs> that, that clip when yeah. you came back home. And you was like, <laughs> We ain't gotta be told no more. I gotta, I gotta show that love. I gotta show that love, man. You know. Yes. Um, but now nah, just, just going back home and seeing, uh, uh, you know, a situation that that I didn't like, and and you know, me personally, never being afraid to be who I was, never being afraid to say this was the community I grew up in. So as I start to ask questions, you know, why, why within this community everybody poor? you know, why they have better schools on this side of town. So I started eternally asking myself these questions as a grown up, 24, 25, you know, and then um, when, once I started to re-educate myself and, and see what was going on with our youth, you know, I um, was an advocate for uh, just, just black youth. Since then, I started doing free tutoring for three years back in Columbia, South Carolina on the weekends. And uh, from there, it stemmed to saying, okay, if they're not doing it in school, what's really going on? So I had to go to the cultural aspect, the psychological aspect, and with my studies and put all this together. And I'm like, well, you know what? We need our own schools. You know what I'm saying? We need our own schools. So um, it was back at home when I first started to teach at, um, shout out to Uhuru 
uh, South Carolina. That's why I first started teaching at uh, Africa Center School in South Carolina with uh, my colleague Keontae and their family. Thank you so much, the Washington family. And um, it was there where I just, you know, the passion grew in me. You know, I love my people. I never was afraid to not be around my people. So um, whether I be doing this or not, you can still find me around my people. And uh, talk to us one more time uh, for this fundraiser. How can people give? They can give. Um, please donate to the cash app. It's dollar sign uh, F-U-N-D-K. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, F-U-N-D-K-K-A. Cash app. Um, visit the website, www kambooacademy.com uh, and see what we have going on. If you're in Jacksonville, Florida, definitely come out to the uh, lecture series. I guarantee you, you know, the information that get passed to be something that you, you know, probably never heard of or heard about. And it would definitely change your outlook and aspect of how you want to raise your child or, or, you know, your future kids if you don't have any. Yeah, so, uh, and that's dollar sign F-U-N-D K. K A. Did I say that yep. correctly? Yeah, that's uh, correct. A dollar sign F U N D K K A. And uh, this funding is how we're, they're able to provide opportunities to educate Black youth with an Afrocentric education. And uh, Dr. Kobe Cambron, I'm sorry, pronounce Cambon. the last name. Cambon. Cambon. Dr. Kobe Cambone. This is a school uh, in honor of uh, Dr. Kobe Cam Cambone. Cambone. <laughs> no R. Yeah. Cambone. Cambone. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and, and, and like I said, uh, uh, this is not necessarily, uh, in my opinion, I don't believe you have to knock a school down to lift another school up, or knock a product down to lift your your, your product up. I believe that this, if this school is going to give our babies a competitive edge in education yeah. and a competitive edge at self-determination, then I believe that as a community, we should do our part to provide them with those opportunities. And, and that's what I see. I see an outlet to give our Black youth a competitive edge in education uh, based on an Afrocentric model. Uh, yeah. So please do your due diligence. Please do your research. Um, they're doing an info session as well as a fundraiser uh, this Saturday. And if you can call out that address for us, uh, Brother Kamal. It's um, 2422 North Murder Avenue. Um, shout out to the brother B-Sign. It's his location. I mean, this brother is a beacon uh, with his building in the community. And he's always willing to reach out and help. So a uh, shout out to that brother for allowing us to utilize the uh, center for this fundraiser. Yes. And listen, everybody, you listen to the Impact Radio Show presented by the Florida Star Newspaper. This is your host, Ms. Sean Nix. We'll be right back after these messages. All right. Now, even though we're taking a break, uh, call out that cash app one more time. Cash app, um, dollar sign, F-U-N-D-K-K-A. Dollar oh, sign, nice. F-U-N-D. KKA, anything will help. It could be a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. Um, you know, we're a grassroots. No, no, 25 and up because you start saying that low stuff, that, <laughs> that low stuff. Now for me, okay. uh, 25 is like the threshold. That's that's that I'm just saying we want to go 25 and up. 25 and up, then that's what we shoot okay. for. 25 yeah, and up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and um and, and and now another thing is call it that website for them just in case they want to do a little due diligence. Uh, www.cambonacademy, K-A-M-B-O-N, uh, academy, A-C-A-D-E-M-Y.com, uh, yeah. Awesome. Yes. Yes, and welcome back to the Impact Radio Show presented by the Florida Star Newspaper. I want to encourage all of our listeners and viewers to please subscribe or do business with the Florida Star newspaper, one of the oldest black owned newspapers in the South. It pertaining to uh, friends, listeners, and viewers, we don't always get this opportunity to, to be able to get our message out uh, uh, based on the media outlet and the media coverage, but this is our opportunity to get that message out. So, 
uh, these type of platforms thrive and are successful through your subscription. They're, they, they, they thrive through your advertisement. Uh, so please support one of the oldest Black-owned newspapers in the South. Uh, uh, you can email info at the floridastar.com, info at the floridastar.com, or you can go online to floridastar.com, floridastar.com. Uh, any closing thoughts, uh, Brother Kamal, pertaining to uh, Dr. Kobe Cambon, uh School Academy? Is there any closing thoughts uh, for our listening viewer audience? Um, I would say this, like I said, if you're in Jacksonville, Florida, come out, definitely support. If you're interested or curious about African-centered education, come out and support, um, donate, definitely donate. And um, uh, I give shout out to the Sister Timalade. This is her, uh, her efforts, her passion, and I'm supporting her 100%, 100%. So we need the community for this. I mean, she's doing the groundwork. We just need the community to actually support, you know? So this is the only, Africa Center School here in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, so it's no excuses no more. We right here and we doing the work. We just need the community to come out and support. So um, those are my last final remarks. Come out this Saturday, you know, we're gonna have a, a great lecture and we definitely gonna inform the public and our people on, you know, Africa Center education. Yes, uh, and, and I also wanna encourage folks to go on out. Uh, even if it's not your flavor per se, I think we got to be able to tie those knots and, and uh, yeah. connect the dots uh, uh, as a community to where it, it doesn't mean you have to put uh, somebody else down to lift another up, but it's really about the child. What is going to help them get a competitive edge in life to be able to compete on a global level? And, and, we, and once again, just things as simple as their learning styles and the culture for learning uh, and tapping into that creative intellect. And uh, one of my philosophies is that you eat what you create. Uh, mm -hmm. You eat what you create. And, and I believe that is something that connects us to our creator. That's something that connects us to God. But if we're not cultivating that creativity, then we're going to have a whole bunch of robots or folks, we want to keep getting what we always got. So I'm always about giving that competitive edge. Uh, another thing, the book teaches us to study to show ourselves the proof of workmen under God need not be ashamed. Yeah. We're rightly dividing the word. And, and, and what, when you're looking at it, uh, a, a, a studying is almost like preparation for combat. Uh, mm -hmm. Studying is almost uh, intellectual warfare. And, and, and we got to be persistent in this call. So we got to be persistent in education. Uh, and we got to be consistent in creating that hunger uh, and that thirst uh, for creating that intellect, creative intellect, that's going to help us make our communities better. Because obviously, uh, if we keep doing what we've always done, we're going to keep getting what we always got. Uh, and, and my closing uh, statement, as I typically always say, uh, knowledge is power. Knowledge of self is powerful and knowledge of God is a source of all power. Uh, please get up, get out and support the Florida Star newspaper. I love you. God bless you and good night. Peace.